If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. And this is Ascend Fridays, where we prove that the magic works. And so today, our proof is going to be in the form of a spiritual evolution energy review for Jill, who has uh, won the drawing for you know one of our week's worth of drawings for putting in a review on the website. So thank you for the review. And she gave us a five star. Thank you for that. And, and I'm super excited to have you on the show. So welcome, Jill. Thank you. So today we're going to do the energy review. So basically how this works is that I'm going to come into your aura. I'm going to look at what's there. That's going to tell me where you are in your life right now. Then we'll go into each of the chakras individually, tell you what the blocks are I'm seeing in those chakras, how those blocks are likely playing out in your life. And if there's a quick fix, I will give it to you in the moment. If there isn't, we'll talk about it at the end as to how to address it. Um, Most people have, have somewhere between eight and 16 blocks and don't take those as a life report card because they're a reference to where you are in your current level not a reference to where you are in your life. And so, you know, when you come into a new level, there's a lot of blocks. When you're about to clear a level, there's very few locks. And so, you know, it's just telling you where you are in the next stage of your spiritual evolution. Now, I will go through at the end, in addition to this, and tell you what the uh, order of operations are for the best way to clear things and how to not work on things that are, are symptoms and instead work on things that are the causes. And so we'll address those as well. And uh, we'll talk about you know the themes that are going through your life and how those themes are working. So most people have between one and three themes. And so we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through. And then on top of that, I just want you to know I'm channeling for most of this. So I will not remember a lot of what we, you, what we've said in about 15, 20 minutes. So ask your questions in the moment, feel free to interrupt me. Normally I would do these readings with the screen off so that you would know that I was reading your energy and not your micro expressions and your body language and things like that. But because it's a podcast and it's on video, it would be boring to turn the screen off. So we're going to leave the screen on. And so we'll just, you know, I'm just going to ask you to trust me that that's what I'm doing. Um, I have done about 3000 over 3000 of these. And so the, the blocks that I go looking for are actually the blocks that are indicative of what people on a spiritual path, what I found in 3000 reviews of (laughs) what, what people have on a spiritual path. And they're also referenced in my book, the overachievers guide to spiritual awakening. So they're all referenced there. If you guys want a copy of the book, it's in the show notes, but you know, that's, that lists out all 38 blocks that are common. Nobody has all of them, but everybody has some of them. And so all good and fun. So, all right. So we're going to get started. Let me make sure I haven't missed telling you. Nope. I think I told you everything. So do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes, you do. Okay. Give me one moment and I'll be right there. Okay. I keep trying to come into your field and getting this sort of look out here, look out here, look out here. Do you have a don't notice me shield? I think so. Okay. Can you just make a little Kelly sized hole on that? I've been trying so far, I promise. Okay. All right. Cause I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm coming in. No, I'm not. I'm coming in. Look over here. I'm coming in. It's like squirrel. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Give me one second. Let me, ah, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm seeing as I'm coming into your energy field is I see you dressed in like <clears throat> traditional tap shoe outfit like you're on vaudeville stage and you're tapping your heart away right okay and and so it's like you're tap dancing right so it feels like you're like running to try and keep up right Mm -hmm. when we're we're tap dancing it's like look at me it's fine i'm okay i've got this covered i'm tired i'm tired i'm tired right it's got that sort of energy does that resonate for you yes yeah 
Okay. And the don't notice me that and in your shielding that you were like, you think so. So it wasn't an intentional thing. That's saying that you're, you're also trying to make sure nobody notices you as you're tap dancing because you're trying not to be a, a target. Does that sound appropriate to you? Yeah. Don't want to be in the spotlight, but don't mind being on stage kind of thing. Oh, okay. That's an interesting dichotomy. <laughs> Say more about that. <laughs> I've always had, I don't want to say an issue, but it's, you know, I played sports in high school and was an orchestra, you know, and it was easier for me to be on the soccer field because I could shine in my own light, but I would never go out for a solo and, you know, concerts and stuff because it was just like, uh, no thanks. Yeah. Part of so, a team find all in the spotlight by yourself. Not so fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, which explains the, the whole thing. Yeah. So, okay. So the, anything else I need to, so the aura just generally sort of says where you are in your life right now. It's just sort of a way for me to prove to you that I've got, got you prove to you, prove to me that I've got the right person. Right. Okay. So let me see if there's anything else in here that they want me to tell you. Give me a second. Okay, so now they're showing me that you're tap dancing in water. And so what they're saying is that there is splash happening from your tap dancing. And that that splash is impacting other people in your life. And so the encouragement is to, the invitation is to perhaps work it such that you don't have to be tap dancing so hard right? Pay, pay more attention to bringing it down to a, a dull roar, right? That your, your default is to operate at this level. You're used to this. It's, it's a thing for you. And, but not everyone around you operates at that level. And therefore, it would be kind to sort of lower the volume of your, your dancing, so there's not, tap dancing. yes, intentional <laughs> tap dancing. I'm not saying stop yes. dancing because, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I, I actually had a relationship breakup 20 plus years ago because he looked at me and said, I don't want to live my life at your speed. And I'm like, I'm not slowing down for nobody. So, you know, I, I just don't want to see that happen in your life because the oh. splash, my splash was very big and it was splashing onto him. And I don't blame him at all for that choice. And so what I'm seeing right now with this is, is that that's that, that reducing the splash would be a good thing. Okay. And that means taking more responsibility for your own care <clears throat> instead of going <gasps> and expecting the other person to pick you up sort of thing. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we done in here now? Uh, yes. Okay. Moving into the seventh chakra. So seven chakra, crown chakra. Let's see how the energy's flowing. Good energy flow out. No energy flow in. Okay. What's, why is that? Hold on. Let me check. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought it was going to be. Okay. So you're a natural channel. And you have learned how not to be a natural channel by shutting down that crown chakra and saying, nope, nobody home, nobody home, go away, talk to the hand, right? Well, it's a good thing to know how not to channel. That's the very first thing you should learn if you're going to channel is how not to channel so that you don't end up with random things possessing you. Uh, but you, you threw the baby out with the bathwater. And so you have just shut down the crown chakra inflow entirely. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do, and before I say this, I'm going to say, how do you do magic? You do it by intending to do it. So when you're going to ask me, how do I do that? I'm going to say you intend to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to do is, uh, is to make the block that you put there permeable to universal source energy, to your guides and to your higher self. Okay. Okay. Because you don't want to not get messages. You just want to not get possessed. <laughs> and that's fair, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's fair. It's okay. <clears throat> and if you choose, you could learn how to channel and you could be very good at it. 
Okay, the fact that you were so solid with this block and just like bang, nothing, right? Indicates that that's the case. Okay, you've already made it one way. So, you know, the energy is flowing out, but not in. So you already made it more complicated than the average person would make it. So, you know, there it shows that you have aptitude, right? Okay. So just shift the way things are, not a big deal, super easy fix. It's just a matter of sitting down and spending some time and intention and making it go, right? <clears throat> So, but it says you have natural aptitude for energetics and that you have the ability to channel. So maybe you might want to learn how to do that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Next piece. Let me see what else is here. Okay. Not that. Uh, how about this one? Yeah. Okay. So that, all right, fine. So the, I wasn't going to say anything because when you fix the flow, it'll fix this, but there is some blocked or diverted flow of energy that's coming around your, around the seventh chakra and going into your aura. You don't want to leave it like that. That's not good. But once you open this up again, it'll be fine. So uh -huh. I don't know why they made me tell you that, but they did. I, that was what the silence was, was me arguing with them. Anyway, the, Okay, so let me check the masculine on this one. Hmm. Okay, so the masculine energy is, we're not talking gender here, we're talking uh, traditional masculine versus feminine aspects in Tantra, right? And it's a Tantric tradition. Um, and so the masculine is about structure and form and about, you know, getting things in directed and focused, right? Mm -hmm. I see on the one hand, I'm like, nope, pretty good. And then on the other hand, there's like this, <laughs> it's just like takes the, the pretty good and smushes it into the ground. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to figure out what that is because it's like, you know, there's, ah, uh, are you ADHD? Or I would say no, but my wife would say yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm a good wife and say yes. She's right. Okay. <laughs> well, because what I'm getting is that you've got all this great structure, but then you squirrel. Mm. squirrel. Squirrel. It's like, okay, I'm going to do all of this and I've got this focus and I've got this going and then I'm over here. Right. And yep. so that's, that's killing your your effectiveness in the masculine energy. Okay. Hmm. And okay. so what's interesting. <clears throat> what's interesting is that this feels more like a resistance pattern than ADHD. <laughs> it it I feels am stubborn. Well, it feels what well, my best people are. So all my folks are stubborn. I love my stubborn people. <laughs> um, but the, uh, it, it feels like this is more of a fear of success piece that shows up than uh, actually an ADHD -ish issue, you know, chemical brain issue sort of thing. It feels like the doubt sets in you know, you get everything set up, the doubt sets in and then you go, oh, maybe I'll do this thing over here first. And then you go do all of that. And then you have the same thing and oh, maybe, and it just, you never pivot back to the thing you were doing before because then it's at the ready to go stage and it just doesn't go. Right. It's too so, scary. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, this feels very fixable in terms okay. of your inner dynamic. It's just a matter of addressing the fear of success piece and go figure on a Wednesday episode, I'm not sure how it relates to when this one's coming out, but Catherine and I on an, an Align Wednesday actually had an entire episode about fear of success. So I would highly recommend listening to that. That would be your solution for this one. Okay. But then there's, you know, there's other pieces and parts. The fear of success can be pretty complicated. Try that. And then if it doesn't work, you know, circle back around. But oh. the... Okay, so let me check the last piece. My, yeah, that was a given. Mind on overdrive, yes. <laughs> With all of this stuff going on, mind's way on overdrive, right? 
So, yep. and I can already tell you that the block in the second, in the set, in the sixth chakra is already going to be showing up, which is your brain stealing your creativity from your second chakra. So, you know, you're thinking everything to death instead of allowing it to come from that creative center. Right. Yep. So I can tell you that's already just from this pattern that that's already there. So, okay. So mind on overdrive, a meditation practice is obviously a great, great way to deal with that one, but mostly it's about letting go of two things. What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And I have to get it perfect. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You let go of those two things. Your mind will stop being on overdrive. Okay. Okay. For you, not for everybody. So if you're out there listening, going, oh, this is my solution. Well, it might work for you, but this is specific for Jill. So, okay. Anything else in this chakra I need to know about? No. Okay. We're good. Third eye, six chakra. All right. Checking out your transmitter. Really strong. Go out to the Akashic, come back. Yeah, not too shabby. All right. So your, your psychic abilities are pretty good. You know, this is, this is where you ask a question, go to the Akashic, grab the answer or go somewhere and grab the answer and bring it back. So okay. that's, that's looking pretty good. Let me look at the, the other side that most people sort of think of as their intuition, which is the receiver side, picking up on what's in the, in the ethers around you. Okay. Okay. Let's see what this says. No, wide open, doing great. Well done. Mm -hmm. All right. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> so I it feels like you do work on this. Feels like you do a lot of active work. On yeah. Okay. That explains mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we already know about the, the stealing the creativity piece. So I'm not going to even look at that. That's definitely there. Let's look at trust in self, trust in the universe. Yeah. Okay. So that's challenged. The reason that's challenged is because of this pattern you've got going on in the seventh chakra, right? It's like you you let yourself down over and over again. You get all excited about something and then you go, nah, never mind. And your inner child goes, but I liked that idea. I worked so hard on it. Why are we not doing it? <laughs> right? Your inner child is having a, a meltdown and yep. and has learned not to trust you. And so your excitement factor is going down. Because mm. you're, you're, you already know it's not going to happen, right? You're like, oh, I'm fired up about this. And like, am I really? Because we know this isn't going to happen. I'm not so sure I'm fired up about it, right? You yeah. know, you can only fool yourself for so long before yourself goes, ah, not, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're getting to that phase where you've got, you've still got some excitement, but a lot of it has drained. A lot of the excitement you used to have for things has drained because you have let yourself down so many times. And so what happens when we, when we fail to have integrity with ourselves, that translates into us not trusting ourselves, which translates into us not trusting the universe because the universe is us and we are it. And mm -hmm. so what happens there is that you are in this place of going, okay, you know, whatever, you know, I'm going to get what I'm going to get. And it just doesn't freaking matter. And I just, you know, whatever. And this jadedness comes in. Right. Uh -huh. And so the cynicism, the jadedness, the, uh, the old, mm, you know, so the key here is you have to start to keep your word to yourself. You have to refuse to do anything that you're not going to follow through on. You have to refuse to promise yourself anything that you're not going to actually give yourself. You have to stop making promises you won't deliver on. Mm -hmm. And if you do make a promise, you need to come hell or high water, deliver on that promise, right? Because that's how you reestablish your trust in the universe too, is by trust because we are the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the challenge when we don't trust the universe is that through the law of attraction, we will generate situations that show us that the universe isn't trustworthy because it reinforces our belief structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be very careful about letting yourself get into a place where you don't trust the universe because it manifests all kinds of crap and you don't want that crap, right? So yeah, all of that.
Okay. So now let me check on your on your power piece. <clears throat> Yeah, not so much for that. It's very interesting. This is very interesting because you are actually giving yourself access to power through your third eye, right? That's usually if I see a not so much in the power center, the third eye is shut down. But you're letting yourself have access to your third eye, which means you don't consider that part of your power. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, if yeah. you did, the block that I'm seeing here would stop that from working. Right. So somehow in your mind, that's not your power. I don't know whose power it is, but it's not yours. <laughs> yep. So I'm not sure how that works, but it's working for you in the moment. I would say I'm not going to worry about doing anything about that right now, but once you start to own your power, you really want to take a hard look at that because uh -huh. if you want to really activate and amplify and be able to, you know, make it run on steroids, you're going to have to own it at some point. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Yeah. So owning your power in this case, it, it, it feels very connected to the trust and self piece for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when you learn to trust yourself, this will unlock. Okay? okay. So I wouldn't do any active work on this. This is a symptom. The, tr the trusting yourself piece is the, is the core thing on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So anything else? No. Okay. Coming into the fifth chakra. This one always shows up physically for me. So give me a second. Looking at self-expression. For those of you who listen and who are listening and not watching, my mouth is just barely open and there is zero energy coming out of it. So the, the yeah. self-expression piece is a no, <laughs> it's a no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is going to play into that not wanting to be center stage sort of thing, yeah. but it, it also feels like there's, so I'm going to go in and look at the other blocks here, but it feels like it's being played into by these other blocks. So bear with me. Um, yeah, definitely got some people pleasing communication going on here. So this pattern comes up in childhood where we're stuck with our parents and we have to manipulate them in order to stay safe. And so we learn how to tell them what they want to hear, not what they need to know or what's true for us. And that pattern continues into adulthood when, because we don't question the fact that we could leave, right? It's like you, you could just say what's true for you. And if they don't like it, you could leave, right? Um, and, and you don't have to be subject to somebody else's upset it just because you expressed what was true for you. So uh, the, the key here is to, to realize that you're not a child anymore and you are capable of, of sharing your truth and dealing with the consequences of that. But the key is to not wait until you're so upset that you don't have any choice but to blow up on somebody because that's, that's the other reason why you don't like conflict is because the, the conflict goes kaboom. Whereas if you address something the moment it happens and you don't sit on it and let it fester and, you know, have other things added on top of it before you say something, if you say it in the moment, you go, you know what, that didn't work for me. Please don't do that again. And that's it. That's all it is, right? It's just like, oh, oh, that's all it was. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. shit, man. If I don't sit on it, it doesn't have to be hard. No, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's that. And then yeah, there's, there's some dependence and asking permission in here as well. Uh, it feels like that's specifically associated with your wife right now. It feels like what's happened is that you've transferred that from a parent of mom to your wife and that you are, so what this is, is it's another child pattern, right? Mm -hmm. It's still living in your child self. It's not taking responsibility for your own choices. It is saying, do I have permission to make this choice? And so this is something to really look at because it, especially in a partnership dynamic, it puts the power dynamic out of, out of balance. You should not be asking your partner for permission. You should be coming to consensus. There's a yeah. difference, 
right? This is a, this is what I want to do. Do you have any concerns about this that, that, you know, and the way it's going to impact you or us? And do we want to discuss it? That's a different conversation than, can I do this, honey? Is that okay? Right. You see how the energy difference, right? Yeah. So the, the, the invitation here is to step into your adult self when you're having those types of conversations and, Mm -hmm. and say, this is what I want. You know, how, how do you see that impacting us Mm -hmm. and you? Right. And yeah. to have a conversation, not to just like seam roll over, you know, because that's what we often do. We go to the opposite. Right. Yeah. Like I've asked for permission for 10 years. I'm not asking permission anymore. <sighs> you know, that that's not what I'm suggesting. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. OK, so here we go. Coming back in. Yeah. OK, so there's there's a piece here about hiding your true self. Okay. Unwilling to be seen or unwilling to be vulnerable. Right. So let me just say this vulnerability. We, when, when we have weird feelings about vulnerability, it's because we're thinking about it weirdly. Okay. So consider vulnerability as transparency rather than being in danger. Okay. Okay. Because what when we think about being vulnerable and we've been living in a space where we felt unsafe for long periods what happens is in our mind vulnerability is handing somebody else a knife putting that knife to our neck and hoping they don't cut us okay that's mm-hmm. how we see vulnerability but that is not how healthy vulnerability is okay healthy vulnerability is allowing you to see me in as my full self intimacy mm-hmm. into me you see right it is literally transparency. And if you think about vulnerability in the way that I originally designed, uh, you know, described to you, mm-hmm. what happens is that you will often pick somebody who feels comfortable holding a knife. And then that's how you get cut, right? Uh-huh. But if you think about it as transparency, then what happens is that you go, oh, I'm just going to pick somebody who I feel comfortable seeing all of me to have this conversation with. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to share some of the darker parts of myself that I don't like so much, maybe, or that I feel sensitive about, or, you know, feel delicate and and fragile. Right. And I, I trust them with those parts of myself. Right. Okay. So that's how I want you to think about it. Yeah, I'm not even transparent with myself if I'm, you know, really stopping and thinking about it. I have a knife to my own throat, so I just need to, you know, speak my truth to myself because I'm the person that I'm with all the time. So, yeah, I need that's to stop a hiding. really good, really good self awareness there. So, yeah, we are our own worst critics. We are our own most dangerous person in most cases. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you're outside of the environment that originally created these problems, right? So, yeah, so that's a good start. Always start with yourself, okay? Okay. All right, so anything else in this chakra? Mm, Okay, so they're giving me a piece here. This one's specifically for you. It's not a common one. Um, this is about your purpose and your passion, right? And they're saying that you're not giving yourself permission to speak about your purpose and your passion, that you're like waiting for some sort of permission slip. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. so, oh, that's funny. They're handing me a permission slip for you right now. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So energetically, you're being passed a permission slip. Put your hands out and receive it. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) And they're saying, yeah, they're saying it's time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Chills. Excuse me. (laughs) I got to shake these chills off. Okay. All right. Anything else? Nope. They're saying that's everything in this chakra. Okay. Coming down into the heart chakra.
Okay. So you have good energy flow in the heart chakra, but I'm feeling like there's a filter on it. And that filter, what is that filter? <laughs> that filter is judgment. It's a worthiness filter. It's like, are you worth my love? Interesting. So, which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a self-defense mechanism for you mm -hmm. because, you know, and you've had experiences of a bunch of people who weren't worthy of your love. Right. Um, but uh, what happens is that that means that there's a dynamic that you do on a regular basis with new people that says, I'm going to put you through a testing pattern. I'm going to test you see if you are worthy of my love, right? So, so if they don't jump through the hoops appropriately, they don't get in. Hmm. And the challenge with that is that people who have a healthy, who have healthy boundaries and are open and loving, don't appreciate being tested. They'll, they'll go through a couple of hoops for you because they go, Oh, look, they need this. Okay, fine. But after a couple, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Right. <laughs> they're just, so you're setting yourself up to be surrounded by people who are willing to go through the hoops to, to manipulate you into liking them, right? Okay. So do you have a fair amount of takers in your life? People who will happily take from you when you're willing to give to them and you get to feel good about yourself and they, they get to have, you know, they, they get the support they need or whatever else. And, but when you ask them for anything, they go, huh, who me? No, 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 I'm, I'm going to be somewhere else. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's because you're putting people through hoops. Okay. Yeah. So okay. not to say you can't get them other ways, but this is part of the dynamic. So it's mm -hmm. pretty common for people who are resonating with the stuff I talk about to have takers around them. Uh, mm -hmm. But yours are, are the reason you're not seeing more healthy people is because of this hoop system you're putting people through. So okay. Um, my, you know, my general concept is, you know, trust everybody until they give you a reason not to, or unless your gut tells you it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. If your okay. gut tells you it's a bad idea, no matter how great they sound, trust it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So hmm, let's see what else is in here. Okay. Feels like there used to be a betrayal dagger in your back, but that that has been released. And so you've processed that. Let's check the grief piece here. Yeah, there's, there's sadness in here. It feels like it's your inner sadness rather than a, a specific loss of a person. So it, it's more of... Let me check the receiving. Hold on. Oh, good job. Receiving love open. Well done. So that's unusual for me to see. So that's awesome. And so, yeah, so th that's, that explains why this grief is coming up because when we don't receive love for a long period of time, we build up a lot of grief around that. We feel sad. We feel unlovable. We feel all sorts of things. And that grief just sits there. And over time, when we learn to open to receive love, that grief will come up. Every time we receive love in, it pushes out a little bit of that grief. And so we feel loved and we cry. And we're like, why am I crying? It's like, because you're letting out the grief of having not felt loved. And so, you know, for me, that process took, took like two years for that to stop happening every time I felt loved. So, you know, it feels like that's the stage you're in right now is okay. in processing that out. So that's, that's where, that's why the grief is showing up here. Let me see if there's anything else here. I feel like there are echoes of not lovable in here. Sort of like a habit you've, you've stopped, like when you stop smoking and you still occasionally, you know, find yourself wanting to 
pick up the cigarette, not because you necessarily want to, to smoke the cigarette, but because you miss the feeling of the cigarette in your fingers. You know, it's that sort of energy in here of that, that, you know, it's, it feels like a, a story that is ending in your, oh in your gosh. heart chakra. And so, but there's just still a few echoes in there periodically. <clears throat> so, but it's just a memory of a block rather than the block itself. Okay. Yeah. So okay. That, does that resonate with you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. Let me see if there's anything else in here that's relevant. Nope. All right. Coming down to the third chakra. All right. Let's look at identity first. Okay. Your identity is to not exist. No, I'm serious. I literally, when I go looking for this, nothing is there. Most people I'll see there's a mask or a, you know, something that's look at me and don't pay any attention to the man behind the, the curtain. Yours is nope, not here. Nobody home. Huh. So, wow. which goes along with what we saw in the aura, right? Uh -huh. But that's the squirrel, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, don't notice me squirrel, right? I'm not here. No, no, no. Look over there. Look over there. Right. But you, you might want to consider actually showing up. Yeah. Just for myself. <laughs> uh, especially for yourself, primarily for yourself. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, claiming an identity, you know, cause you know, it's not just, I mean, partly it's about claiming your space, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's about saying, this is who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember, I don't know, oh, God, it's 26 years ago. I went to an event and one of the elders at the event looked at me and said, who are you? And I gave her my name and, and she said, no, but who are you? And looked into my soul and I went, I don't know. <laughs> it blew me away for, for years. I was just sitting with that question of who are you? And I was like, ah, right. So, you know, that's the question to ask yourself is who are you? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to look into your soul the way she did into mine. Cause that was freaking traumatic, man. But, <laughs> but this is your question to yourself because I, I, you know, you're not even showing up in your own inner work and working as a, as an identity. Right. So mm -hmm. this is something for you to, to, to really think about when we, when we deny our identities or hide them either way, what we're doing is saying we're not okay. Hmm. Okay. okay. So there's something not okay about me. So I can't show up. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind and work with it from a very compassionate place of, you know, what is it that I don't feel okay about? And why is it that I feel like that can't be seen in the world? Right. Oh. And, you know, how can I get okay about that? Okay. Because okay. you have to be okay with yourself first. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Looking at the inner child. Stunner. She's playing hide and seek. <laughs> of course. She's like running away from me, laughing hysterically, not going to turn around. She's like, I'm, I'm, find me, find me. I'm, I'm hiding. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Big surprise. She's playing hide and seek. It's all in a theme, right? All right. Uh -huh. Make me know your theme right now. It's hide and seek, right? So, but she's happy and she's having a good time. So, okay. I think that, you know, some, some work you may want to consider would be to do some meditations where you sit down with her because of the stuff that we saw in the seventh chakra with the getting all excited and then dashing your hopes sort of thing. Mm -hmm. There's probably some work to do around that and reestablishing trust with her. Okay. okay. But it feels like you have, feels like you do other creative things and other fun things that mm -hmm. it feels like there's a, you have alternate ways of connecting with her because it doesn't feel like she's mad at you. It just feels like she doesn't believe you anymore. Right. When you start doing these big things, 
Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> she's just like, yeah, all right. So she's not mad because you you do engage with her in other ways. But uh -huh. so that's a good thing. Good news. The the bad news is that she doesn't believe in you anymore. So she doesn't believe you or believe in you when we're doing these big things, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a matter of getting her back on board. And that's going to be a matter of proving that you follow through going mm -hmm. forward, right? Okay. Um, nothing worse than having a child anticipate being disappointed. You know, that there's a little breaking of the spirit that happens there, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you can prove to them that they can be fulfilled, that their expectations can be fulfilled, then they light back up again, right? Okay. So, yeah. okay. All right, let's come into the, the blocks here, see where they are. All right, so there's a not good enough, which is not surprising given the all the hiding, right? If we weren't afraid of being not good enough, there wouldn't be a need to hide, right? And then let's see what else is in here. Yeah, there's a not important piece in here. And that's the, that's again, a function of that blocked masculine energy in the not finishing what you start thing and, you know, the fear of success piece, because it's like, well, if, if I was really important to you, you would have worked it out. You would have figured out what this is, but you haven't. You've just kept distracting, distracting, distracting. So there's a, that not important piece shows up and it's, it's likely being reflected in all of your relationships around you that you're not important, important button gets hit, hit a lot. Um, <clears throat> like you didn't ask my opinion on this, or you didn't talk to me about that, or, you know, oh, you get cut off in traffic and no, oh, you didn't care about me. And you were more important. You know, there's all sorts of ways in which the not important button gets hit. So, you know, all of that is a function of not putting yourself as a first priority in your own life. Okay. Yep. So the fix to the not important button is treating yourself as super important in your mm -hmm. own life. Okay. All right. <clears throat> no. A mm, little bit. This one's really minor, but I'm going to mention it. There's a little bit of too big, too much in here. It's like, oh, you're, you're too much. You're too loud. You're too talkative. You're too, you take over too much space. You know, you take up too much space in the room sort of thing, which is an ironic thing to have for somebody who's hiding, right? It, it's like the push me, pull you of it. Right. And uh -huh. but it, it's just like this much of it. Right. It, it's, and I think that the reason it's this much because I can see you and you would be this like bright, shiny, you know, blah, 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 if you were not hiding. Right. And uh -huh. so it, it's only this much of it because you're hiding. Right. Okay. So yeah. I, I, you know, I have to talk about it because as you come out of hiding, this is going to amplify. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I want you to be aware of that. And I want you to be like, you know, yes, I'm going to take up as much space as I want to take up. <laughs> this is my space. And mm -hmm. I'll be aware of not tromping on other people's space, but I'm taking up my space, right? That's the key is you've got to be in that place, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and you're going to feel like taking up your space is taking up too much space initially because you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. But I want you to Keep in, you know, if you're ever wondering, look from the outside in and say, if I were looking at this person from the outside, would I think they were taking up too much space? Because uh, we, we can always be objective from the outside, right? Mm -hmm. It's from the inside where we lose all objectivity, right? We're just like, I don't know, I can't tell. Ah, ah. It's like, well, imagine you're on the outside looking in. What does it look like, right? Yeah. Okay. And when in doubt, you know, ask a trusted person, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah keeping in mind that as you evolve, the people around you will be uncomfortable because you're changing the dynamics of the relationship. So don't always take their word as gospel, just for the record. Okay. All right. So coming down, is that everything here? Yes. Okay. Coming down to the second chakra. Okay. We already know that the creativity has sort of been stolen away. 
Still seeing pretty good color in this chakra. So good energy flow through it. Uh, not seeing any problems in the addiction area or the attachment area. So that's good. Got some guilt going on. Not shame. It so feels like guilt was used to control you in your childhood. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that is still active in your field. Um, and what you have to recognize is that guilt is a manipulation technique. So anytime somebody is telling you to feel guilty about something, they're trying to control you. Right. So, yeah. You know, in our very young days, we are taught how to have compassion for others through saying, would you have liked that to happen to you? No, you know, that these, these mm -hmm. are things that, that these are patterns that in adulthood look like guilt, but in childhood, we're trying to help us to form good emotional context, right? But mm -hmm. in adulthood are straight up manipulation right? Because mm -hmm. your patterns are set at this point, and there is no adjusting your emotional patterns at this point. So the, the only reason to use these patterns is to manipulate and control, okay? And so when the, the guilt pattern shows up, and the most common form of this is you're selfish. You're being selfish. Anytime you want anything, you're being selfish, right? God forbid that the other person should look at themselves through the same lens because they're wanting all sorts of things and they're putting their needs and wants above you and using your selfish as a way of making you take it, right? So just be aware that that's a common pattern, right? But in this case, when the your selfish comes along, you, you can just simply say, no, I just want this and that's okay. I'm allowed to have it. And when they go, no, blah, 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 other people, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, your guilt is not going to change my choice. Yeah. Right. You just need to whack it in the face. Right. You need to speak up. Yeah. It's yeah. It, well, you call it out for the manipulation that it is. And it's yeah. like no amount of guilting me is going to manipulate me into changing my decision. So how about we let this go and move on? Right. <laughs> I'm yeah. a big fan of metaing conversations that are going down manipulative paths. I just step up to the meta level and say, mm, not going to be manipulated today. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't feel like participating in your drama in your drama today. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's like not playing. So, okay. Uh, so it feels like you've got creativity in here, even though. And, and that's where the inner child relationship is coming in is that creativity, even you, you steal it for the projects that you're trying to do up in the crown chakra, but yeah. you still have some here for like art and, and, you know, other creative pursuits. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that looks good. The sexuality looks good. Sensuality looks good. The passion passion's a little challenged and that's again a function of the not trusting yourself piece mm -hmm. it's hard to be passionate yeah. about something if you don't trust that you're ever going to get it it's like why bother right mm -hmm. so again same thing okay anything else no that's everything in this chakra coming down into the root chakra home stretch all right let's just check the energy flow here Okay. So good energy flow. Uh, it's not going exactly where it's supposed to as it comes through. It's weird. Where was that energy coming from then? <clears throat> hmm. It's a weird dynamic. Okay. So what I'm seeing is as the energy comes up from the ground into your root chakra, it's coming up just a little bit. It's not getting all the way to the top of your head and coming back down again, which is how it's supposed to flow. So there's a tree meditation on YouTube. I would highly recommend you pick up and take a look at that. Um, 
and practice that, that will ha- that's an easy solution to this. And you should probably do it anyway as you, as you open up that crown chakra that we talked about, because you're going to need to establish that pattern flow anyway. So the tree, tree meditation will do both pieces for you. Okay. Super quick fix on that one. You'll just have to do it a bunch of times. So, you know, you'll do it like three times a day for the next six weeks, and then that'll establish your pattern again. Okay. So, all right. The, the thing that I am seeing is that there is a steel plate under your feet that you've punched through to get to this thing, right? Now that steel plate is representative of having given someone else permission to pass judgment on your life. Now, because they have permission to pass judgment, if they decide that they don't approve, they can yank your feet out from under you at any moment by yanking that steel plate out from under your feet, right? Okay. Now, you've punched through it, which means that you're trying to live around it, right? But it's still there. So the way to get rid of it is to, to remove permission, okay? And what usually happens with this, and this definitely feels like it's parental, right? What usually happens with this is that we live our life by our values and then we judge ourselves by our parents' values. And that's what sets up the steel plate problem. And we always come up wanting because we're not living by the same values we're judging by, okay? So you you will always be unhappy if you do that. You you have to live and judge by the same values, Mm -hmm. okay? So pick one right now. Oh gosh, I, for me to not even like say anything kind of scares me, but my brain is overworking and trying to pick the perfect answer. So yeah, help. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, that's indicative, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna let you sit with it because you need to pick apart where this come where this is coming from, right? Because yeah. inherently uh, the underpinning here that I'm feeling from you is mm-hmm. my parents won't love me anymore if I don't judge by their values. Okay. And, yeah. you know, anytime we have a fear like that, for one, love is meant to be unconditional. Let's start with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And for two is that the, the biggest thing about a fear is being able to face it. So if you're wanting to walk through this, you're going to have to look at it and say, okay, what if that's true? What would I do? And come up with a plan. Okay. Okay. Because the, the thing that makes it overwhelming is having no plan. Yep. Okay. So. Yep. You know, you've got to look at that, but you do need to make a choice because that's right now you've got this steel plate under your feet. You've punched through it. Your, 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 your energy is like back and forth on this. So you, you do need to make a decision on it. The reason I I hit you with it between the eyes the way I did is because I wanted you to be aware of how much the the dissonance was. I knew that was in your field, but I wanted it to be really conscious for you. Okay. So Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to need to do some work on that. Okay, so let's look at <clears throat> fears around safety and security. Yeah, there's a lot of about that around that particular issue in particular, right? But then also, you know, you wouldn't be hiding if you didn't have fears around safety and security, right? So the the thing about this is that this is not something you need to address directly. It's a function of everything else. So don't worry about focusing on this one. It'll go okay. away as the other things go away. Okay? okay. 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 Your parents are divorced? Mm-mm. No. Okay. So this is very interesting then because what I'm seeing is your mother is the center of attention in the room. She is. So I always see people, the family dynamics in a kitchen. Okay. Mom mm-hmm. is sitting at queen bee at the kitchen table. Dad is nowhere to be seen in the room. He is in another room in the house or whatever. That's why I thought they were divorced is because he wasn't in the picture at all. Right. Oh. So like he is irrelevant in the picture and I feel a sibling, but I don't, s- do you have a sibling in the past? I did. Yeah. 
Okay, that explains yeah. it because I can feel them in the room, but they're not in the room, right? It's like they're they're there, but insubstantial, right? Yep. Okay. All right, but I'm not feeling a solid gender. Were they were they non-binary? Um, as far as I know, um, pronouns were he him, but I had kind of a falling out with him the last five years. Like I had no communication. Okay. With him, but we are definitely the closest you know with sibling relationships and stuff and i feel him and talk home all the time like yeah you okay know. yeah i it's just very interesting he's not presenting as male in this he's presenting neutral so that's very interesting so yeah it, it feels like it's all about mom that's what i'm saying Mm -hmm. So, and then everything else is just sort of like, whatever. Right. And I'm, I, and I was not feeling a lot of connection between siblings in general. So yeah, it's like, it's like everybody went their own path. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm just leaving that with you where it is. So let mm -hmm. me check on the tribe area here. It's weird. Okay. So I'm feeling connection to a friend group, but instead of it being a circle of friends, which you normally see, or a group of friends, mm -hmm. yours is like, uh, you remember when we would go skating as kids and you would have this long group of friends and you would like whip the group uh -huh. and the person on the end would get flung off. Your friend uh -huh. group looks like that. It's this long line of people waving back and forth with occasionally somebody getting flipped off the end. It's, it's okay. very strange. And I'm, I'm sure that's not how you think of them, but, but having this vision, I think you will see the dynamic I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, but it's I'm very strange, but that's what I'm looking at. So <laughs> Uh, but it does feel close and connected. It feels like you guys really love each other and, and support each other and the whole nine yards. So that feels good. Okay, let's look at the manifestation bubble. Mm, okay. So your manifestation bubble starts in your root chakra and is getting infused with that fear around safety and security the moment it's formed. And so there's a lot of fear going into your manifestation bubble. You see where it goes. Slows down at the second chakra. The passion isn't there to fuel it because the fear is amplifying. And at the third chakra, it stops. Okay, so if you're having a hard time manifesting, it's the fear that you're infusing your manifestations with. Okay, Does that's it go back to the fear of success and yeah, it's, and everything? It's, it's... Yes and no. It goes back to that block, but it's a function of your fear that you will let yourself down. Huh. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, it's the, oh, really? Okay. We're going to try it again. So imagine, did you watch the movie Inside Out? Uh huh. Imagine sadness is in the center of your bubble because that's the energy. Okay. okay. Sadness okay. is in your bubble and going, okay we'll try right and but she's so low energy and she's so sad that she just wears it all down and i just can't make it past the third chakra and it just gives up right uh-huh that's what's going on right now okay, okay. Yeah. so you know this is about using the energy of intention to shift that base level function of your root manifestation okay okay so this is about consciously putting positive energy into that mm -hmm. and starting to become a person of integrity to yourself such that you can believe it so that mm -hmm. you don't have to fight against that inherent energetic in the beginning okay okay yeah all right is that everything checking yeah Okay, so that's everything they have for you. Do you have any questions about anything we've talked about so far? No, I'm just keep thinking how it feels like it's just on two dynamic sides of like 
oh da da da, you know, but this is so I don't just it's me. <laughs> it, it's, you know, just two extremes trying to go through life. So I'm loving this, but also it's hard to hear, but I need to hear it. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> Anything worth hearing is usually hard to hear. So yeah. And I always tell people, I'm like, I don't tell you anything you don't already know. I just often put it in ways that you didn't know how to think about it before. So, um, so the, the themes here for you are, you know, you're hiding, that's one. And then you don't trust yourself is the other, right? And so, you know, then, then that comes from the fear of success piece, right? So you know, in, in terms of finding a pathway through this and what to choose first, I would definitely work on the trust factor first, because when you can trust yourself, you can also trust yourself to keep you safe. And so it's much easier to do the work on the, the showing up and being seen when you know you can trust yourself to keep yourself safe. So, you know, do the, do that piece first. And then the fear of success piece is in, integrated into that trust piece. And so, you know, you can start working on the trust piece by not doing things that are related to success, right? You won't have to address the success piece to address that if you're not doing it around things that are related to success, right? So if you're just saying, you know, I promise I will take a shower today, or I promise I will go out for a walk today or whatever, all of those things are ways to build your inner integrity without poking that bear of success, right? Um, but at some point you are going to have to poke that bear and then you'll have to address the issues around fear of success. Okay? okay. So those, those pieces will all be integral. Okay. And so the, the, the hiding piece, the not showing your true self, the not being seen and all the pieces there, that will be a piece that will be much easier to do once you're on the other side of the, the trust factor, but it's still going to require its own bit of work, right? You're going to have to do some work around, you know, speaking your truth and stepping into your adult self and, you know, all of those pieces that we talked about. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but once you're, once you're confident in your ability to keep your child self safe, it's much easier to step into that adult self. Right. Mm -hmm. So that sort of thing. Okay. All right. So I think that's everything I have for you. Any last things you want to say, you know, what, what was this like for you? Would you recommend it to somebody else? Oh, 100%. You, you don't know what to do unless you know what to do. So that's, you know, just it, when I like to overcomplicate things, you know, so it's nice to just have some guidelines of I'm doing okay, but just here's a few things to kind of tweak to just fully realize my truth, my power, myself. So it, it's just looking into a mirror and, you know, speaking those things out loud. And that's what I needed to hear the most to go all in. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And that's all we have for this week. We will see you on Monday for Mystical Mondays with Josh and I. But keep in mind that what you focus on expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Don't forget to like, rate, and share. We appreciate all your support. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,